set. So, can you tell me who you are, just for the camera? Yep, my name's Alistair Baker, and I'm the Managing Director of Microsoft here in the United Kingdom. That's great. Um, so what we're going to do today, uh, I'd like to get you, get you to cut a, a nugget. Uh, for cut a nugget? Cut a nugget. That's okay. Is it so painful, or uh, <laughs> we'll how's, that, how's that going to work for us? So, um, let me just go through a little bit about what a nugget is. So nuggets are really meant to be a very short, very direct piece of information, no slides, get okay. down to what it is developers want to know about, and it's really touching on the pain points that developers see today. So, okay. you know, if you're a developer, you don't have the time to sit and watch a webcast. So no time wasting, to the point, right just get it. straight straight into it, perfect. Right, so um, I understand you might have a bit more history than just being an MD of Microsoft. Uh, I'd hope so. I'd hope there was <laughs> life before my, my current so, job. So what happened before? Um, well, I, I, in terms of my career, I worked for IBM for a few years, I worked for Hewlett Packard, I worked for... Uh, Microsoft for 10 years okay. in Scotland around services, small and medium business. When was the last time you write, wrote a piece of code? Oh, the last time I actually did any any coding of, a, of, of any type was writing some JCL for one of the guys here okay. about five years ago. Oh, wow. They were trying to integrate um, some of our, um, our technology into a uh, a mainframe application and needed to start up some uh, some batch jobs on the mainframe and okay. this email came out saying does anybody know how to write JCL and I went back as the head of service and said yeah I used to do that quite a lot when I worked for IBM so uh, yeah and before that you know usual coding through my computer science degree right. so COBOL, Pascal, BASIC, none of the visual stuff that, so, that hadn't happened have before. Have you found a visual studio before? Um, once I think okay. yeah and probably shut it down very quickly after that. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to call upon your, your programming skills. It's not going to be too strenuous. Uh, but, uh, Give it a go. So I've chosen to, we're going to use some devices. So I've got, I've got a couple of devices here. Okay. And what we're going to show is how to use a particular API, a new API, on the Windows Mobile 5 platform, which actually makes it a lot better for developers um, when they want to integrate tightly with the device. It's a, it's a major step forward from Visual Studio 2005 and uh, Windows Mobile 5. So I probably ought to give you a bit of background about what that feature is before you write it, because you need to have uh, credibility when you when you actually write. Right. Get yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to disappoint the audience. Absolutely. So that's very important. Otherwise yeah. So hit me with it then. What have I, what have I got okay, to know? So state notification broker. I'm going to do a little bit of okay. a thing here. So the, the problem you've got right now is you've got lots of different sources of information on a mobile device. You've got um, uh, some information in the registry, some information in applications. Uh, and some information which sometimes is hidden on the device itself. Things like signal strength, battery, power, okay. uh, various different things. It's all the operating system type things. Mm, that sort of thing. Now, that's quite interesting to a mobile developer when they actually want to make use of the device itself. So you've got your, your, your customer's app over here, uh, and what they have to do now is they have to write some code to go into each of these different pools to bring those things together. So what we're going to look at is a new feature which is called State Notification Broker, which sits in here and actually allows the application to go to the state notified broker and it uh, simply fronts the registry <coughs> to provide you with a way of querying all of these state information including some of the hidden stuff um, and also will allow you to push information to the device so rather than polling you can simply say you know tell me when something changes and it's very very simple it's like three lines of code to do it so I'm going to get you to write a piece of code which shows how to query information for the okay. signal strength of the device um, I'm then going to get you to write a piece of code which says, okay, don't just query, tell me when it changes. So the signal strength is one of a uh, hundred different ways you can pull okay. information off here. Right. And it's quite an important one because people want to know when they're calling a web service, you know, going outside the device, yeah. when they can actually do that. So yeah. It's quite a key. So we'll queue it and then, and then wait until the signal comes back and then fire off the query? You can do query. that in So the whole idea of this okay. particular that's cool. state is that you can actually find out what's going on. Right. So that's, that's basically that piece. The next piece I need to tell you how we cut the nugget or how we write the nugget. So right. Let's spin around the okay. computer. So am I in charge? You will be in a very few minutes. <laughs> so um, what I've got here is a slide deck with a picture which we dug out. It took us ages to find this picture of you, but we've got quite, quite an interesting one. Um, I do need to ask you, okay, when we're putting the... Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, there's right. some queries and so send them through. we've literally got two slides. Well, there's a third one here. The first one is for you to introduce the subject. So okay. hopefully you're understanding of that. If you've got any questions, I, I can answer those and make sure you're comfortable with the state notified broker. I'll show you the code in a minute and we'll see it running. Right. And then I want you to write that code. Okay. And I've, it's not going to be a case of making it up. I've got some uh, some script for you to do that. Okay. Um, so the first thing is we'll, we'll actually record this and some words from you. Um, and then we're going to go into Visual Studio and I'll take you through how we can create that project and how you're going to write that code. And then once we've done that, we'll come back into 
here and we'll record a summary which tells you uh, four statements there so we're comfortable about you know summarizing the, the, the slide and a few extra resources including a channel 9 link there so people yeah. know where they can get the information okay relatively straightforward and the way this works headset there so we'll throw that on um, and what we will do is use a product called Camtasia recorder to actually record this information so am I just reading this out then? Is that the plan? It won't be reading out. No, I need you to actually make it up. Now, um, we'll, 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 I'll give you some words or, or some idea of what to say uh, in just a bit, but I want you really to, you know, it's got to be real, so you've got to understand what you're doing okay. before we can go into it. So the application itself, this one I wrote earlier, I'll give you some idea of what it is. Actually, let's go for recent projects. Here's one I wrote earlier. It's very straightforward to do, and I'll take you through it in a second. So what we've got is a simple form here which has a, a, a label um, a text box and when we run that on the device and I've got a little tool here which gives us a remote screen so we can see what's going on okay. I can run that application up uh, on here this is the one I wrote earlier let's just do that So you can see right now it's pulling the signal strength in. Now this is where the props are required. But the trouble is this building is so good for signal strength, you can't get rid of it. So, so you need to pop it in the tin. So, <laughs> in the tin. so I've, I've been everywhere to look for the Faraday cage. Um, I've now got one. I'll pop it in the tin and then we'll see the signal strength uh, tail off and die as the uh, device picks it up. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. There we go. And also I've got a notification coming here that there's actually a low signal strength as well. And that's yeah. quite important because obviously in that situation you wouldn't start firing off web requests. So, how much of a challenge will that be for you? What, to talk about that? To, <coughs> to do that. Uh, it's going to be interesting, so okay. we'll give it a go. Hi, my name's Alistair Baker and I'm the Managing Director for Microsoft here in the UK. Yeah. Certainly with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, it usually takes us about 10 takes to get one of these ourselves. Right. So don't be afraid to stop and do it again if you need to, all right? And where, where you start is F9, count to three before you get going. Okay. Hello, my name is Alistair Baker. I'm the Managing Director for Microsoft here in the UK. And this Windows Mobile, mobile Nugget is going to talk to you about the State and Notification Broker which is a uh, new module that's available under uh, Mobile 5 to help uh, interrogate a device uh, of its system services on things like uh, battery power, signal strength, etc. and will enable us to write much richer applications for um, the client in order to understand what's happening on the device. Right, so that's our first cut. And the next thing I will do is we'll switch across the... Was that right, by the way? That's absolutely right. Okay. Hey, this, is, this is as real as it gets. So, okay. you know, I make a load of bugs and, and mistakes in this. That was good. That was good quality and, and we're ready to go. So the next thing I'd like you to do is say, okay, what we'll do is switch over to Visual Studio and actually go and do that. Um, switch to Visual Studio here and then just go file... So this is 2005 what we want to This is 2005, yeah. File, new, project. So file, new, project. Right. So, so, so device application. Project, device application, and then we'll hit the OK. Then okay. That's fine. It takes a few seconds to come. Right, so here we have the form. So the device form. Let me, let me show you that bit. And what's, what's this called a project? I need to explain how this works. So, the um, libraries we're going to use, you, you actually have to reference a specific extra library, it's like linking in an extra module. Sure. And we do that through the Solution Explorer area here. So if you, if you can, there's a references section. Right click on the references section, add reference. And there are two we need to bring in. If you click on Windows Mobile and uh, click the control key and the status one, sorry, not shift. If you go for mobile and status, down one, there you go. And then click OK. And that brings those two in. So that's class libraries being brought in, is exactly it? Exactly right. So we okay. can now reference those inside of our code. Has Matthew done one of these? You just stitched me up like a kipper. <laughs> Is it alright? No, it's fine. No, I'm enjoying it. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Let me come back. Where do we get to? So, when you're so got to, we're back on the form. Should we be back on the form? Then we're going to do the old. Let me come back here. We need to go into. So double click on here, and now I need to get the name of the 
label in, which I included earlier on, which is called signal strength. Dot, and that's a text equals, remembering to preserve the uppercase on system state. System state, and here we have the option to actually include that library that we included earlier on. Dot phone signal strength. There you go, it's now picked that up. Double click on that. Two. So I better do that again. Okay. Okay. So it's dot two string. <coughs> yeah, okay. Because it's a. So that, so that comes back as a numeric. So numeric. The phone signal strength is one of the properties, but that comes back. Numeric. So I've then got to translate it to a string. Right, because okay. this is a string here. Yeah. The, the label dot text is the value that's being okay. displayed. So this line of code, it really represents what the new capability is. So we're saying we want to pull from the system state functionality one of over 100 variables, which is phone signal strength, which we all know about when our mobile phones go, uh, go wonky when we lose uh, the signal when driving around. And because that's a numeric um, value, we need to then translate that into a string, which then can be presented back into the form. Awesome. That's really good. To go after, to go after here. So just it's this one here. Okay. So that's actually the end of the function. It's quite interesting because you actually put a function inside of a inside of a bracket here. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're into that sort of stuff. I'm sure it's it great. On a sinker. <laughs> So just to show that even a managing director doesn't always get uh, their code 100% correct, we've actually got a bug in this application. So we're now going to double click on that and it will take us to the appropriate line where the issue is. And we now go and look at the actual application and you can see it's deploying it onto the actual device itself. So here we have the current signal strength and you can see it moving around based on the level of strength that we have uh, available in the office. Now one of the things we have here is a um, Faraday cage, which is actually a Fox's Speciality 12 variety biscuit tin that we're going to use to actually uh, replicate or reproduce the signal dropping. So I'm now going to put the device in the box, close the lid, drop in between 74, so it hasn't triggered the threshold yet. And there we go, it drops down to 46 and the warning signal strength low warning comes up on the screen. So in summary, we now have a single mechanism for system state, and what that's showing you is the ability to actually have the application get trigger points from the device in order to understand what's happening on the device and therefore build a richer set of capability and a better experience for the end user. And of course, channel line at channelline.msgn.com. So thanks very much for listening. I hope this has been of use to you, and uh, I look forward to building my next application sometime soon. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. That was great. How painful was that? That's all right. Let's, um, Good guidance. I wouldn't mind if you can, if you can spare a few more minutes. I'm going to go and quiz you on a few things. Right. Um, just just to so we got something for the Channel 9 yeah. material. Perfect. So, how was that? That was a lot of fun, actually. Um, one of the things that I, I found amazing about it was just, just actually how little code you had to write in order to do what must be an incredibly complex uh, set of... Uh, programming if you're having to do that from, from the outset. So God knows how much time you save compared to having right, to write that from the ground up and having the expertise. So well, you, you couldn't do that in the last version. That's, that's new. In fact, I mean, the Visual Studio 2005 experience is so actually, actually pretty cool. You, you were involved in launch yesterday, weren't you? I was, yes. I was, it was great, actually. The, the buzz in, in Birmingham was fantastic. We made a very good call going into Birmingham, having a big scale event. There must have been about 2,000 people there. Right different tracks running and it was great so just just to see people coming to a very big event and being very buzzed about uh, something we're bringing to market yeah. was very much reminiscent of the old days when we did the big product launches so it was, it was a really really good session so I mean this was studio 2005 sql server 2005 and they're, they're massive products and we've been working on what five years i guess so maybe a little bit less for you yeah, Steve, Steve Barmer stood up on stage and said it's been a long time coming, maybe a bit too long in, in, in the time, but when you think about the importance of, um, of getting it right and getting the right amount of functionality, then one of the, the criticisms we often get from enterprises is that we release software too frequently, too many, too many releases, so they can't complain about this one. But what we can kind of guarantee is that the quality and resilience and capability of that technology is going to be way higher than anything we've shipped before. It's the biggest launch in, in servers history. And I think it really transforms Microsoft from being a, a wannabe 
in the enterprise uh, mission critical uh, space to being really in a position whereby we can go head to head with, with anything that's out there including the IBMs, the Oracles, the Suns and of course at a price point, a functionality point and a, uh, an overall value point that uh, our competition are going to have a really tough time with. So I mean, you've, you've seen the products, we've, we've played a bit with it there, um, I know you're not a dev day by day, uh, but for you what's the, what's the coolest feature you've seen on a VS, a Visual Studio for developers? Um, okay, so outside of that one where I actually wrote my own application with a bit of help from you, um, the, the reality is it's the, it's, the, it's the productivity. So you think about the importance to, to the business of either being first to market or, or having to follow a competitor that's done something that's been innovative in, uh, in their marketplace. The fact you can actually cut time, improve developer productivity, improve the quality of uh, the application you're writing will give our customers, those customers who are really placing a bet on, on, on our platform, the opportunity to, to outpace their competition and drive more productivity in their business. So that to me is the, is the real benefit from a business perspective. So, so what about team system? I mean, for me that's, that's quite a cool package. The, the beauty of team, team system is that when you actually look at the, uh, the marketplace for the, the um, overall lifecycle management uh, play, then it really polarizes between stuff that's very niche and stuff that's very high end with clearly with Rational and uh, IBM's ownership of that. So the examples we've heard of where um, team, uh, team services is really adding a lot of value are into those organizations that are looking for greater agility uh, about you know, architecting, developing, uh, testing the application and using that framework in order to, uh, to wrap a methodology around that. So I think it's going to have very broad appeal to, to a much wider set of customers than the products in the marketplace today. Quite interesting. So, so one of the things we're seeing grow quite a lot is like extreme programming. I mean, especially with the mobile stuff, people tend to be very small groups. Yeah. Tend to be moving very, very quickly. Does it fit? I mean, does, does the team system fit with Agile? What's the story? Yes, well, my, my, my understanding, having met uh, some of our partners who are really specialised in this area, is that they're actually writing methodology and plugins in order to, to wrap the methodology, uh, extreme methodologies, around uh, the VSTS um, capabilities. So you're going to have the best of both worlds. You're going to have a great set of tools in order to drive um, comprehensive, integrated development methodologies uh, or development capability, as well as having the methodology wrapping around that to help guide and make sure that uh, what you actually produce is what you believe you're going to produce at the outset of the project. Okay. So that's VS today. Now, the, the, what we do in, in, in uh, developer platform is we obviously now not close the book on VS, but we're looking at what's next. And I think developers are quite interested in the next step from Microsoft. We've, we've got the technology which we've finally released, which is really good news, and that's going to give a lot more benefit to the, to the developers for to, sort of tomorrow. What about the day after that? What's next? Where are we going from Microsoft's perspective? Is it, what's the, the plan for the development? We're still innovating, we're still moving forward. Oh, absolutely. We, we will spend over $7 billion this year on research and development. Um, and, and a large amount of that is on the, the data systems product. So it's on SQL 2005, BizTalk 2006, uh, Visual Studio 2005, and all the server technologies that uh, wrap around that. Of course, um, Windows Server 2003, R2 is coming out. Uh, very soon as well. So they actually represent a large amount of the R&D spent. These, these services and, and server capabilities are only ever, ever as good as the applications that you have to put on top of those. So that's what the business needs in order to support the capability beyond things like email and uh, collaboration with SharePoint. And so we will continue to invest and innovate around Visual Studio in a very big way. And the, the capability of, of driving richer function, of driving shortening of uh, development cycles, so how everything integrates into the VSTS uh, capability is something that we believe going forward is going to be integral to providing more and more value to the developer and how the developers and the architects and the people who actually have to worry about running the service can add more value to their business customers, whether it's internal customers or of course customers out on the, uh, the internet as these new channels open up. So, so what should I have to look for next year? What's coming up next year?
Well, I mean, clearly uh, we've, we've, we've made a very big launch um, in, in this, so we're going to drive uh, the launch activity and then, then a sustain. So I think you've seen uh, a pretty good set of announcements from us over, over the past few days. And that, that's really the focus for us is to making sure that we get that in the hands of as many people as possible who can benefit from that. The development teams have already started on thinking about the next generation of, uh, of capability, but I think we have enough on our hands to, uh, to, to, provide, to provide the developers and and, and add a lot of value to businesses through right, what we've so delivered. A couple of other questions then. What device do you use? Um, I'm actually a smartphone user oh, and yeah. I have to, I do, yes, I have it here. So uh, I've just got a text message from, from someone, sure. Oh my goodness, it's well beaten up. It's well beaten up, Definitely it's been used. dropped many times and uh, it kind of goes with me wherever, wherever I am. Um, so how important is devices to, to Microsoft, Microsoft UK? I mean, we're interested in that, it's obviously from the UK. Yeah. But, uh, is that important for us? It's, it's very important. The, 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 the need to have information on the go. I mean, I'm, I'm a busy guy, you're a busy guy, you know, lots of people, everybody's busy these days. There's no, 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 no such thing as uh, somebody who really has uh, idle time in their hands in, in business. And therefore being able to get access to vital business information on the move, having a reliable, secure platform that can, you can deploy mobile applications, whether it's email or calendaring around the personal productivity side, or indeed the next generation of, of applications now starting to be uh, uh, delivered in, into our customers and into Microsoft, where you actually have a line of business application right. on your phone as well. So they're an incredibly d important part of how businesses can take advantages uh, or take advantage of what's available out there in terms of broadband capability on, uh, on, on 3G and 2.5G. So it really is about the convergence and having the appropriate platform, the development tools, and the infrastructure in order to get those applications in the hands of, uh, of people who can really benefit from them. Okay. So um, I'm going to change the tack a little bit. I'm interested. You know, you've been through quite a history, both in Microsoft and previously. What's it like being MD of Microsoft UK? Is it pressured? It's. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough job in, 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 a, in a number of different ways. It's, um, I'm, I'm not somebody who um, gets off on, on, on the title. I do a job and I've done a variety of jobs in the company, all of which I've in, enjoyed a lot, and this, this role is, is no different. Do you get to sleep? Uh, yeah, normally, sometimes. sometimes yeah, yeah. yeah. No, pla actually, planes I can't sleep on, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good sleeper. So I don't need a lot of sleep. What do you, <coughs> so what do you do for kids now? Well, I play the guitar, uh, not particularly well, but that's a great way of completely getting your mind off work. Uh, I'll snowboard in the in the winter. Try and get uh, get some snowboarding in. So I hear you swim as well. Well, yes, I can swim. I used to swim uh, quite well when I was younger, and so I got lake? yeah swim? out there. Yes, I, I ended up in the lake um, so through a like, bet. What, what was that all about? Well, basically, I had um, I had a bet. Uh, no, in fact, my finance director had a bet with one of his employees that uh, she couldn't get a forecasting number right. She did. He then decided he was going to renege on it, so I sent a mail to the whole company uh, trying to uh, uh, egg my finance director, uh, Paul Hart, on to, to go and do it. So he then said he would do it if I did it. So of course we all ended up in the drink and raised about £5,000 for charity. No, actually it was about 70 degrees. The summer sun had been on it pretty much um, all year, it was in, uh, all summer, it was in September, uh, beginning of September. So no, it was actually very warm, just a bit of algae floating around. So. And of course, we had everybody in there, their, their, uh, their dogs saying, don't do it. The company doctor said, don't do it. Thames Water said, don't do it. Health and safety said, don't do it. But uh, we, we, we thought it was for a great cause, so we, uh, we went in. Well, I just want to know whether Paul sank or swam. No, he was, he was sinking. Oh, sorry, no, he was swimming, actually. We had one person I thought was going to sink. Oh, really? Yeah, they had a wetsuit on, and so uh, I was a bit concerned about them. So, uh, well, at least, the, at least the financial director can float the books and float the... Absolutely, float yeah, good, good, good point. That's, that's the best thing. Okay, well, I think that's probably uh, all from us today. I know you're a busy guy, so you probably have to get off, but I just want to say thanks ever so yeah, much. Yeah, thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. And thanks for your help on, uh, on, on the application. Yeah, no <laughs> okay, right, bye.